What's up everyone, this is Sky Tech Freak and today I'll be talking about how I managed to improve the airflow and temperatures inside my NZXT H510 Elite build. So if you guys saw my last video where I actually built my PC inside the NZXT H510 Elite, you saw that the build looked really good, it looked really aesthetically pleasing, but as I mentioned even in the last video that thermally it was just not going to be a very strong performer and over time I was using it and despite the strong components and specifications of that PC, I wasn't getting the most performance out of it because of how hot that case would get and because of that both the CPU and GPU would thermal throttle and underperform and I wasn't getting the most out of that system so I knew that something had to be done I realized over time from using it that it wasn't going to work out so I made a few changes one of them is actually a front panel mod so I'm sure you can see that usually the NZXT H510 Elite actually has a glass panel in the front I've of course modded that and I'll talk about that first and then I'll talk about the changes I made internally in the system where I moved a few parts around earlier I was using Corsair fans and I was using an air cooler from Cooler Master all of that has changed I'm using internally fully NZXT parts except of course for the Corsair RAM still and uh, the GPU, which of course Corsair doesn't make, and the motherboard obviously remains the same, which is again an MSI motherboard. Apart from that, the fans, the LEDs, and the air cooler, which was Cooler Masters, and the fans, which of course says, those are all gone now, replaced by completely NZXT parts, except for two fans, which I'll talk about uh, in a second. But first, let's get to the front panel mod. So I'm just gonna turn my PC around, and then we'll be able to talk about the front panel more clearly. So as you can probably tell by how janky the front panel looks right now, that this isn't the one that was shipped with the NZXT H510 Elite, that it's obviously some sort of modification specifically for airflow and like I was mentioning basically initially when it was glass and we all know that glass traps a lot of heat what would happen is the side panel was already glass and then this front panel was going to be uh, made of glass and then the only intake that was available if you can see with these slits over here which is the breadth of like this much of a slit on the side and this part would be completely covered by glass so no air could enter through here no air was entering from, from the side of course because there's already glass panel here and we already know how glass retains a lot of heat or doesn't let heat escape which meant that the only place air was coming in for new fresh or new cold air to come in was going to be from this slit over here but the problem with that is that it's not even coming in directly from the front where the fans can just pull in air directly from the front what was actually happening is since there was a glass panel here the fans were creating a negative pressure and then air from the side was going to have to push in from here and then go through in the system. So at a time there was only that much air that could actually enter through the system. And on top of that, this slate is also covered by a dust filter, which also reduces the amount of airflow that's actually gonna go into the case. And because of that, because of the two glass panels, this hard panel, and the fact that there's only one slot for exhaust, there isn't even a second exhaust. There was just so much heat that would stay in the case and not be able to escape. And especially when I would put my hand above the single exhaust, it would be, like hot to the touch like actually super super warm you could feel it get really really hot uh, on top and that's just not the case anymore not since i've had not since i've made uh this front panel modification so what i've basically done is i had someone make a frame to the dimensions of the front panel of the nxt that's a glass panel and uh i mean as you can see it just looks super untidy and janky from the back of course is because i cut out some uh, pieces of plastic and basically just shave them down to be the right size to fit into these two holes on the NZXT uh, so that I could just slot slot the thing in uh, and it would actually work. So even here you can see there's a slot down here, a bit of a slit uh, down there which actually isn't the same breadth as that of the front panel and so I've even shaved down uh, the ends of this sort of frame that I made so that it fits this and so that's the frame that I made and use plastic knobs on the frame to actually slot in to the slots that the the original glass panel was also move, uh, making and then this front mesh is just something I bought on Amazon I think it's like um, I don't know what it's called exactly I'll link it but it's like some some designer mesh for furniture or something like that but it's a metal mesh it's quite durable and strong I didn't want something flimsy like cloth or something um, that could tear so I wanted something that would look good uh, in black. I think this is a decent design. It's obviously got enough perforations or holes for enough air to enter. It's basically like having no front panel at all, except there is one, so it looks good. And of course it blocks a certain amount of dust. So as you can see, I'm just gonna show you the installation now. As you can see, it slots in down here. You can push it in and then you just line up those knobs and you push it in here and that's how you install this front panel mod that I made and I think it works really really well. One thing to keep in mind if you plan on making a sort of modification like this is the fact that since it's an open PC case now since there's 
basically no dust filtration that's going in. There's going to be a lot of dust that accumulates in your system. There's a lot of dust that will actually go into your system and you can see fast here also there is a little bit of dust accumulation in my radiator fins that I basically just blow out using uh, a blower or a vacuum. Uh, right now it's been running for a few days that I haven't cleaned it and um, I was thinking of some ways that I could probably fix that and so I actually picked up the Silverstone 3 pack 140 millimeter uh, dust filter covers and they would just sort of go on like this but as you can see it basically covers up a lot of the RGB and I thought that you know since this is like also a designer aesthetic case I didn't really want uh, to ruin the aesthetics in that sense so I figured it's probably best not to do that instead it'll give me like <laughs> an incentive to keep going in and cleaning my case and keeping my um, components nice and clean which of course hasn't been going as ideally as I would have hoped you know because I'm lazy uh, but otherwise it's um, it is something to keep in mind so if you live in a place where there's a lot of dust or your PC is kept in a place like maybe under your feet or something where a lot of dust can accumulate closer to the ground uh, be careful that you have something to protect it from the dust if you're doing something like this front panel mod because if you're only using the side slit on the NZXT H510 Elite it's already dust filtered and secondly there's not that much it's pulling in anyway so you don't have to worry that much about dust but as soon as you sort of um, make this front panel mod and basically leave the case open you don't want to make sure you get some of these like dust filters that you can stick on and that's something you can actually find on Amazon there are 120mm ones and 140mm ones um, you can sort of if you see the screw holes here you can just slot them in and so while you're screwing the fans and you can just screw the dust filter back on them and they're super easy to clean uh, but again if I had done that to these fans what would have happened is it would have not looked as good it would have blocked some of the RGB and of course it will affect airflow it will make airflow a little bit worse so if airflow is your absolute priority then again you probably want to avoid uh, those dust filters I thought maybe those dust filters would have worked with the Corsair LL fans that I had installed in the case previously but um, not with these NZXT ones that only have uh, the RGB on the frame because it was basically covering like four parts of the frame already so I just thought I'll show you guys uh, the installation of this front panel mod from the side two ones as you can see when when you pull it out or push it in there's a very audible sort of click that happens and that's only because I've really shaved down uh, these plastic knobs to precision uh, and of course like I said I've if you can see it from here, I've actually thinned the ends so that they actually fit into uh, the slits at the bottom of the NZXT Elite that held the front panel as well. So this is quite, I mean, it's it's a very janky replica of what the front glass panel feels like, the frame of the front glass panel feels like. And if you guys don't want to go through the whole effort of making a second frame, you can also just use a hot gun and remove the glass panel from the NZXT H510 Elite's front panel, but I wanted to keep that as well in case I ever found a build that wasn't getting so hot because of course the glass panel looks far better. Uh, I wanted to keep that frame intact. So that one's still lying with me. Uh, this is of course a self-made, like homemade frame uh, that I put together. And let me just show you that insulation from the side. Like I said, it's thin at the bottom, so it slots in here. As you can see, it sort of pushes in and then we just need to line it up. And once it's gone in from there, you just line up the two knobs and there's that click that I spoke about, the audible sort of push in that makes it feel very, very um, secure. So this is not going anywhere unless you mean to pull it out, which I did right now. And then I pushed it back in. So the NZXT H510 is quite infamous for having bad airflow and therefore having a lot of these front panel mods. If you've ever been on the NZXT subreddit, or I'm sure there's a, a lot of videos on YouTube as well with these front panel mods for the NZXT H510 Elite. Uh, you guys also know that, at least on the subreddit, I read consistently that having a replacement front panel mod that's more or less basically open or other users that didn't want to go through the whole headache of having a front panel mod and would just remove their front panel completely, which is also, of course, the solution for the same airflow problem. We're getting about 10 degrees better temps because there was so much more air circulating in the case. So if you remember in the, in the start of the video, I said that it wasn't just 10 degrees better. It was something like 16 to 18 to 20 degrees better. So that is going to be accounted now to the second change that I, I made in the system. And let me just talk about that because that's got to do with the internal parts that I've actually replaced. So if you remember, of course, like I've said, I mentioned once or twice before in the video, that there used to be complete Corsair parts. It used to be a Corsair fan system inside that they used to be Corsair LED strips uh, all that has changed now I've actually put in NZXT AER fans in the front and then 
two AR fans for exhaust. So one at the top and one at the bottom. The front ones are 140 mm fans. The ones on exhaust, both on top and at the back, are 120 mm fans. Now I know that the top exhaust actually has uh, a slot for a 140 mm fan, and I know that I feel like since, since there's such limited exhaust area in the NZXT H510 Elite, maybe the 140 fan would actually make a lot of difference. I just haven't had the opportunity to try it because I didn't have a third RGB AER fan, and I felt like the aesthetics are also a little bit important for a build like this. So, apart from just the four NZXT RGB fans that I'm using, the AER2 fans that I'm using, four of those, two 140s and two 120s, I've also made a few other changes or additions of NZXT lighting products inside the case. I'm using their underglow kit as an RGB strip at the bottom and that's because the RGB or the underglow kit is actually diffused light so you can actually put it through the case because most cases have this part. As you can see there's a border on the tempered glass for the NZXT Elite and so on this side and on this side I have an RGB strip which is like sort of an exposed RGB strip but because of the border it gets diffused but at the bottom it's never possible to put an exposed RGB strip especially in the NZXT H510 Elite because there isn't a bottom border here which is something they should potentially or should add but I guess it'll have to be pretty high too because you can always look into the case so maybe it doesn't make sense to have that unless there's a depression that can hide uh, exposed RGB strips but so as a solution to that what I've done is used both both parts of the NZXT underglow lighting kit which actually goes under the case uh, for whichever case you choose to buy it from so it actually fits this case quite well because it's been made for NZXT cases but I haven't used it at the bottom of the case I'm using it uh, inside the case as a diffused RGB strip so that it lights up upwards uh, the whole case so but if you're wondering why I moved away from this Corsair lighting and cooling ecosystem to this NZXT lighting and cooling ecosystem. There's actually a few reasons for that. The first, of course, being, as you can probably see, another change in the internals of this PC, the fact that I am now no longer using an air CPU cooler. So earlier I was using Cooler Master's 212, Hyper 212 black RGB version, which is one of the better air coolers. Of course, it doesn't compete with something like uh, the Noctua's. It's well regarded as a good CPU cooler, but even that was just, even though it had both a push and a pull fan attached to it, both Corsair LL fans, which again are good fans, uh, despite all that, it just wasn't able to keep the 5800X that's in the system cool at all, the Ryzen 5800X, which runs hot anyways with it, with its sort of eight cores, uh, it was really, really struggling in the system. So if you've noticed, I've actually replaced that with a Kraken X62, uh, this is not the newest version of the Kraken X series, of course, I know that the 63 is out, but, and this is one of the big reasons why I even switched to NZXT, is because I got this cooler secondhand, pretty cheap, uh, from someone, and uh, it's working perfectly, it worked really, really well, and I thought, you know, if I have an NZXT cooler, and I have all these NZXT parts already lying around with me, why shouldn't my, and given that I'm in an NZXT case, why shouldn't my whole PC then be NZXT and so with that I just switched the fans out and I also know for a fact that um, the NZXT fans do move more air than the Corsair LL fans so neither fan is bad but I know that the NZXT fans are just better and so I figured if I'm actually making improvements for my PC to be as good on temps as possible and as cool as possible with the most airflow I should probably bank on NZXT versus Corsair. Uh, you'll also see that there are two fans that I haven't mentioned yet. So, of course, the four fans from NZXT are there. But two fans that are at the pull on the radiator here, the pull on uh, my Kraken X62 here, are these two Arctic fans. So these are two Arctic Bionics fans. And I figured that the reason I got white ones is because I've had to remove... So, if you want to get a push-pull configuration on a 280mm radiator in this case. You actually have to remove this sort of cable management bar that goes in and I really like the aesthetic of like having a white line down the front middle of this case and so I figured what better way to do it than to sort of just add white fans and it's actually more difficult than you'd imagine to find white 140mm fans. So for 120mm fans it's like all varieties and designs and you know different different types of, of 120mm fans in terms of looks, in terms of RGB and everything, but I had a hard time finding white 140mm fans. But of course, these Arctic ones, and we know Arctic makes some of the best fans, like comparable to Noctua's and comparable to 
uh, silent wings and things like that. So, and they are ne like cheaper than those companies as well. So I just bought two of those. Can't complain with their airflow, of course, like no way. So now the AERs are pushing the air, the Arctics are pulling in the air on the radiator and then keep feeding a lot more air because it can, because there's far more space for it to give, uh, to pull in air from and give a lot more air to that system. And therefore, because first of all, that we're not using, we're not relying on airflow on a heatsink anymore because we are now using an AIO. So it's cooling the radiator and then moving uh, that here. So in cases that the airflow isn't excellent, AIOs do better. And in cases that are excellent, of course, CPU coolers do better because they're just pushing cool air through their heatsink. But here we're cooling the heatsink so that the sort of coolant can actually cool the CPU instead. So again, what's happened here is we've changed the front panel mod, we've added an AIO, and because of these two big changes, then of course, the fans that we've attached to that AIO all coupled together, these few changes have actually made my system run from like anything from 16 to 18 to 20 degrees cooler than it was originally. So another really great thing about moving to the NZXT ecosystem is of course NZXT CAM, which is a fantastic software, especially for PC monitoring. So like I said, I was going to show you guys the temperatures. Now earlier, my, C my CPU would idle, and I mean idle, idle at like 56 to 58 degrees, and the slightest like 1%, 2% CPU load would push that thing straight up to 65, 67, 68 degrees, which is ridiculous uh, sort of temperatures for any PC. Uh, now you can see, because I have a lot of cores there, uh, process is still running, the CPU isn't able to like really potentially idle properly. Uh, if I plague all of those out, if I end the process for all of them, then the CPU can actually go as low as about 38, 39 degrees on idle. Um, and then of course the slight CPU load brings it up to about 48 degrees now because of all these processes running in the background at idle it sits at about 42, 44, 45 degrees and then a little bit of it will push it up to 51, 52 degrees and uh, while gaming it actually the CPU stays pretty warm it'll not go higher than about 65, 66, 67 degrees and on Cinebench the highest I've seen it go is 87 degrees which is still very very safe because and that's after a long extended amount of running Cinebench uh, whereas in the last case, of course, it would immediately like seconds into Cinebench, milliseconds into Cinebench, it would jump to 90 degrees and it would just sit there for the whole entire test. And uh, of course, then performance, like I said, was hindered because that is the peak at which the CPU then starts thermal throttling itself because that's the peak of how it considers temperatures that are safe for it to function at. 87 is still well within the limit of what should be allowed. Ideally, you should be at an 87, uh, at an 85. Um, but of course, given that this case is what it is, you can't expect ideal airflow and ideal temps. So there's still going to be some problems because, like I said, there's limited exhaust even with uh, this open front panel and things like that. Uh, you can also go ahead and limit or underclock or undervolt the CPU, not give it enough power. So if you go in and limit it to 65 watts which i have done uh it then on cinebench only goes up to 82 degrees which is again much lower but then it does take a big hit in performance which i didn't really want if i was paying for performance by buying a more expensive cpu why go ahead and cripple its performance like that or why go ahead and handicap it in that sense so that has been my sort of talk through on how i managed to make this case serviceable how i managed to improve the temperature and airflow in this case to such a degree that i can now use it completely happily use it as uh, my everyday driver and if you're wondering where those corsair parts went i do have a build coming up with all of those parts in it so that's also another reason why i moved those parts out of this build i have another exciting build probably where that 3070 will also go um, into my new build. So stay tuned on the channel to see that. Uh, that's all for now. If you liked the video and if that inspired you to maybe make some changes with your own case, I'm glad I was able to help. If I wasn't able to help, uh, I guess I hope you still enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.